What is the di difference between the old production industry and the new production industry? I think the difference is that uh, the new production industry must um, establish a completely different relationship with, its, uh, with the user, uh, which was formerly known as the consumer. Um, it, has, it must be the result of a dialogue uh, between designers, manufacturers and end users. Uh, so therefore it's a, it's a completely different attitude towards production. It has to take into account um, specificities and therefore to some extent it must be open. And why did the old production industry disappear? Um, partly because it doesn't resonate with a, um, a certain kind of cultural uh, shift that is occurring at the moment, um, which is the idea of uh, very much of, uh, the user being particip participating in the um, definition of product. Um, so the product not as something that's fixed and closed, uh, but actually as something that kind of is evolutionary. Does it have to do something with the economic crisis that everyone is talking about? Absolutely. I think um, I think that's. Uh, uh, I think it began even before the crisis in a way, but the crisis has really accelerated this um, process of awareness yeah. about a kind of a social responsibility as well. Uh, and I think that that's very um, important and very significant in design at the moment. So, and if design becomes a way for economic growth, what are the conditions for design to be successful? Well, that's, I think um, we have to rethink what economic growth means in a way, because if it's simply an acceleration in the process of consumption, mm -hmm. then of course that's a kind of an ir irresponsible definition of um, economic growth. But mm -hmm. I think there are other definitions of economic growth as well, uh, which are um, an improvement in the standard of living, uh, an improvement in uh, kind of collective happiness. And, but I don't think it's so much about how you get it, but it's actually putting that as an objective. That's a really important gesture to actually say that it's not simply about having more objects or being uh, wealthier in terms of the number of objects that we possess, but it's actually about the relationship that we have with the objects that we possess. And uh, I think the one thing that's really emerging more and more in um, a lot of designers, uh, like some of the ones that we saw this afternoon, is the idea of um, us actually taking part in uh, having a much closer relationship to how they're made, taking part um, in the manufacturing process ourselves to, to some extent, maybe knowing the people who make them if we don't make them ourselves, uh, having a, uh, and therefore kind of placing the object um, much more kind of centrally within communities, the production. So you've been traveling a lot and you've just arrived here today in Renk and you haven't seen so much, but do you think that this area has the potential to become cultural capital in 2008? 2018, I guess. 2018. I, I, I absolutely do think it has potential. I think it's a very important, um, I think it would be a very important gesture to actually place one of the kind of the industrial, former industrial capitals of Europe um, as a cultural centre because it would signify, it would reinforce this idea that uh, Europe is a continent that is uh, in shift, that shifted away from industrialization already, had went through a very painful process of restructuring and now must um, in a way uh, acknowledge again the importance of manufacturing, making things of craft, of creation. Uh, and I think that that's something that in the specific context is already being discussed a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that if it were to become cultural capital, it would have an opportunity to do so even more loudly and more. Okay.
Thank you very much, Joseph. Great.